Hello, welcome back to another day of my art development series. If this is your first time here, my name is Andrew the Wren, and this is a series that I'm doing where I document my everyday art process and growth as an artist. So this weekend I actually did a ton of different drawings, and I'm going to release them kind of every day sequentially uh, throughout this week. But one of them, the first one, is actually a two-part series. Uh, and so I think what I'm going to do is in this part, I'm going to kind of talk about the big ideas of the drawing and like why I decided to approach this drawing. And then tomorrow, when I release the second part, I'll talk a little bit more in detail about my process and, and kind of how I thought about the actual, drawing proce uh, the actual drawing process. So the big idea that I was really after today, and you'll see from the title of this video, is exploring this idea of contrapposto. Um, so if you're not familiar with what contrapposto is, uh, it's an Italian word that kind of means uh, opposite or on opposite angles or opposite axes. And what contrapposto refers to is a way that the human figure stands where the shoulders of the figure are generally speaking at the opposite direction of the hips of a figure. So it's kind of this, this pose, and you'll be seeing above me, uh, there will be an image of uh, Michelangelo's David sculpture, which is very famously in contrapposto stance. So you can see, you know, very obviously that the shoulders are tilting one direction, and then the hip is kind of tilting the other direction. And so uh, contrapposto kind of has an interesting history in that the ancient Greeks actually used it in some of their sculptures, but kind of in, during the Middle Age periods, or those periods that were preceding the Renaissance, uh, it was kind of lost and if you look at kind of figure drawings um, uh, from that period, you know, from the let's say the 1200s or the 1300s, often the figure is standing in this like very rigid kind of straight up structural way. Uh, but then by the time the Renaissance came around, this idea of contrapposto was rediscovered. And the reason that it's so important is that it's actually so, so much more naturalistic. If you start to kind of look at the way people are standing or the way that you're sitting or standing yourself, you'll notice that kind of the natural instinct of the human body is to kind of go into this contrapposto stance, where generally speaking, uh, it, it's very rare that your shoulders are perfectly straight across and that your hips are perfectly, perfectly straight across. Uh, rather, you tend to kind of lean on one side or the other, and these two things kind of lean oppositely. So there's a few kind of things or elements that I want to talk about with respect to contrapposto um, and why it's important. So first of all, it's exactly as I just said, it kind of gives you, it's a more naturalistic feel. So when you're painting or drawing in contrapposto, you automatically kind of add or inject a little bit of realism into your, your image. Um, the second is that it gives a lot of uh, dynamism to the pose or a lot of gesture to the pose. So if you've been following the series, or if you're kind of familiar with the idea of figure drawing, um, gesture is like a really critical component of creating good images. And I think there's probably no easier or no better, at least in my opinion and for me, uh, no easier, no better, no lower hanging fruit to kind of mastering uh, or adding a mastered element of gesture into your drawing than the contrapposto position. Um, and personally, you know, you, I, I go so far, we're drawing today a, a sculpture that's in contrapposto position. But honestly, even when I'm drawing someone that is standing more or less rigid, like as close as they can be, like suppose they're, you know, uh, in line in like a, a military formation or something like that, I will often, even then, exaggerate a little bit this kind of diagonal, like these kinds of opposite tilts between the shoulders and the hips. Um, because it just adds such a beautiful element into the drawing uh, that, that, that's kind of hard to describe. And I recommend even practicing this yourself, like just do two little sketches, little two minute sketches side by side, one that's in a contrapposto position and the other one where you kind of exaggerate, or one that's without it and one where you kind of exaggerate the contrapposto uh, positioning and you'll see like immediately uh, uh, the, the lesson there. Um, so I'm often always trying to insert it into my drawings, even if it's not present in what I'm looking at. And then when I do see it, I often exaggerate it. And in fact, what I'm doing today is I'm kind of doing the lay-in uh, part one of this, of this drawing. Um, and you can see that actually I even exaggerate the, uh, the lean of the hips and the lean of the shoulders more than Michelangelo did in his actual statue. Um, and that's a stylistic choice for me. Maybe somebody wouldn't agree with that or wouldn't like that. Uh, but for me, I actually really, really like it. Um, and there's something else that I want to talk about with contrapposto, which is the idea of the pinch and the stretch. And this is an idea that I originally had heard from Steve Houston, who's an amazing artist. Highly recommend that you check out his work. He even posts on YouTube, actually. Um, and the idea of the pinch and the stretch 
is that in every figure pose, one side of the figure is stretched and one side is pinched. And part of this is because of the contrapposta nature of a pose. So if you look at the reference with Michelangelo, you can see that the side where the shoulders and the hips are kind of joining, where they have that lean together, that side of the waist is kind of pinched in. There starts to be folds of skin that are kind of coming in on themselves. And then on the other side of the figure, you get this like beautiful stretch that occurs because in that part, the hips and the shoulders are further apart. And so you get this like beautiful stretch of the side, you know, a further distance between the rib cage and the top of the hip. Um, and you can see that I kind of really tried to push this in this drawing. And, and when we look at day two tomorrow, where I actually start to add value, uh, you'll really kind of see this idea uh, come, come to life. And so um, I think this is a, like a really useful tool that you can play around with that I think, again, adds realism, dynamicism, um, and just like visual interest into your, into your pieces. Uh, and it's definitely worth the time to study contrapposto and understand you know, why the Renaissance spent so much time kind of mastering this and re-injecting this back into, into their artwork. Um, so I think I'll let the rest of the block in for today play out, and then we will see each other again tomorrow when I do part two of this, uh, where I really kind of talk to you more about my process of drawing and, and how I was thinking about drawing and less about the, the actual principle of contrapposto. Um, and we'll, we'll do that tomorrow. So I hope that this video has motivated you to draw today or to experiment a little bit with contrapposto, and we will see each other again tomorrow.